Please join me in our scripture today, which is from that wonderful text, Romans 8, 28 through 39, from the New Revised Standard Version. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. When then, what then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us, who will separate us from the love of Christ. Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor debt nor anything in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I think we could go home right now. <laughs> but since you all have hired me to preach, please pray with me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds together be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Rabbi Harold Kushner wrote a book entitled, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. This was one of the first books that I had to read as part of my pastoral care training at Hershey Medical Center. The title pretty much sums up the whole book. The title isn't, Why Bad Things Happen to Good People. It's, When Bad Things Happen to Good People. Rabbi Kushner wants us to stop and recognize that bad things do happen to good people all of the time. Terrible accidents like children left in sweltering hot cars, young mothers struck down by cancer, and civilian planes flying on designated civilian air corridors being shot down by Russian separatists. I understand that the first words that were heard from the man who shot down the plane was, oops. I really don't like that bad things happen to good people. Where is God in all of this? How can it be that if we are faithful Christians and try our best to follow all the covenants that God has made with us, that we still have trouble, tragedy, and sometimes really bad suffering to deal with. The book entitled The Shack is an engaging, powerful, and thought-provoking novel about a man whose young daughter is kidnapped and murdered. This man has an amazing experience of God's presence, being able to talk directly with God with Jesus and with the Holy Spirit in wonderful conversations. While the man is at the shack, he receives healing and forgiveness and is ultimately able to forgive the man who murdered his daughter. 
Following his experience, he drives home but is nearly killed by a drunk driver who runs a stoplight. The first time I read this book, I was really surprised that the author would end the book in such a terrible way. And then I realized that it's much more believable than having the hero drive off into the sunset and live happily ever after. Bad things happen to good people. Whether we like it or not, this is the reality of our living. So what are we to do with all the bad stuff? The plane shot down. The Malaysian plane that disappeared off the radar and has never been found. The terrorist attacks. Whole communities burnt to the ground by wildfires in Washington state. Indescribable miseries around the world and in our own lives. As Christians, we say and sometimes we believe God is in control. The question then hangs out there before us. If God is in charge, then why do bad things happen? What in the world is going on? A minister tells the story of a young family who died in a crash of their single engine airplane. Twelve-year-old Beth, who died, was a close friend of his eight-year-old daughter, Sarah. Sarah was devastated to learn that Beth was dead. She sobbed and sobbed as the terrible truth sank in. It made no sense to her that something like this could occur. In her pain, she began to feel angry, which is a normal reaction to such grief. Her Sunday school theology taught that God rules this world which means God controls everything that happens, even plane crashes. The minister said that as he held his daughter on his lap, Sarah lashed out in her tears the way only an eight-year-old can do. God is not very polite, she said. Later that night as she lay in bed talking with her dad before her nightly prayers, Sarah began crying all over again. The minister tried to explain that even though Beth was no longer here, she was with Jesus. No more crying, no more pain, and in a wonderful place. Sarah responded, God may be happy now, but I'm not. No, her father replied, God is not happy. God did not make the plane crash. God does not do things like that. It was a terrible accident, but God has picked up the pieces and brought Beth and her mommy and daddy home to heaven. He said Sarah was not reassured by this. It was good theology, but it was cold comfort to a daughter because she missed her friend. When I was a little girl, a friend of mine died and a well-meaning person tried to comfort me, saying, God sees your friend as a beautiful flower in his flower garden. Today, God picked Lilla to be a part of the flower arrangement for his lunch table. Instead of finding comfort as a six-year-old, I began to be terrified about going to sleep afraid that God might pick me to decorate his dinner table. You see, I didn't want to be simply God's table decoration. Daily, I am with many people who are desperately seeking to make sense of a tragedy or horrible occurrence that absolutely cannot be explained. Horrific things do not make any sense. Often, well-meaning folks thoughtlessly quote one sentence from the Apostle Paul's very profound statement to the church in Rome. For we know 
that all things work together for good for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. And yet, awful things continue to happen. Holocaust, September 11th, ethnic cleansing, millions of starving people across the world, deliberate bombing of children in schools, breakouts of the deadly Ebola virus. We can each name something terrible to fill in the blank. As a pastor who listens and offers care and compassion, I often wonder how we as ministers can continue to preach and teach that a sovereign, loving God is in control of everything without raising significant intellectual, philosophical, and even theological questions for the people who hear us. Bad things happen to good people. I'm sorry, that just isn't right. Dr. Albert Wynn, a Presbyterian pastor and distinguished church leader, wrote that at the heart of the biblical faith, we do not find an airtight argument for God sealed with therefore. Something like, all is right with the world, therefore let us have faith. Or, good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people, therefore let us praise God. No, instead Dr. Wynn wrote that at the heart of biblical faith, we find things that do not logically follow at all, sealed with a nevertheless. We find something like, there is a lot wrong with the world. Nevertheless, let us have faith. Or, if God created everything good, then why is there evil? Nevertheless, let us praise God. Perhaps we can better deal with the miseries of life if we can accept the fact that life isn't always fair and doesn't always work out the way we want it to. Nevertheless, let us praise God. Regardless of what happens to us, nevertheless, God is with us and will never, ever leave us alone. The book of Job ultimately concludes with this realization. In chapter 1, terrible things happen to this good man named Job. The next 36 chapters share the words of well-meaning friends telling Job he must have done something terribly, horribly wrong for God to do all these things to him. Job's wife tells him to curse God and to die. In the same 36 chapters, we find Job responding that nothing makes sense. What is happening to him is not the way things are supposed to work out in life. Finally, in chapter 38, God speaks. And it is a most unsatisfying response because God never, ever does answer the whys or wherefores for why Job has experienced everything that he has experienced. God's response was, okay, where were you when the foundations of the earth were established? How about snow? Can you make it snow? or a tree. Go on, create a tree. No, God never does answer that why question. The thing that we must ultimately accept or reject is that there are some things for which we will never ever have answers. There are great parts of life that are mystery. If you need a faith, that makes sense, a faith where one plus one equals two all of the time, 
a faith where bad things only happen to bad people, then you're going to have problems with Christianity. It was Andrew Hedden, one of Scotland's top theologians and young preachers, who said, when we ask the why question, why is all this stuff happening to me? We are asking the wrong question. The question isn't why. The question is who? Who is with me while all of this stuff is happening? I can answer the who question. It is the same answer Job received from God when Job stopped asking why. Who is with me when all this stuff is happening? God. God is with us no matter what. Nevertheless, God is sovereign. Nevertheless, Jesus is always present. This is what Paul proclaimed to the church in Rome when he wrote, For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor things present nor things to come nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from God's love in and through Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be.